she um, is the head of a um, a government um, a government funded group, uh, Section Nine, uh, that fight uh, cyber terrorism, um, which she believes to be humanity's biggest threat. Um, and through this journey of um, of uh, fighting terrorism, um, was, which is what she's tasked to do, she she embarks on a um, on a path to self-discovery in a very unexpected way. I don't want to say it's an alternate universe, but it's certainly, uh, I think, what I would describe as the not so bright, not so distant future. Um, you know, I think humans are uh, still able to use technology to their advantage, um, but have lost the kind of in doing so, in, in, in becoming so dependent on technology for their own um, satisfaction, enhancement, happiness, have sort of forgotten or are losing a, a sense of their purpose, their sense of self, um, connectivity, all of those things. Um, it's, a, it's a world that is, uh, I think, sort of, Isolate, isolating and uh, um, sterile. Um, the thermoptic suit is really, uh, it's sort of like a second skin um, and it allows her to become invisible. Uh, and of course everything that goes along with, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a tool that she uses to be um, offensive and uh, um, obviously to be, you know, um, undercover and, uh, it's, you know, she, there's other characters in the film that have the same technology, um, maybe not as advanced, but it's not something that's, you know, it's not like a super suit or something like that. It's just something that, uh, you know, it's out there. We know that this material exists and it's something that allows her to just, uh, you know, kind of fight under the radar, um, you know, but the skills that she has are her own skills. It has nothing to do with wearing the suit. Rupert and I talked a lot about the plight of this character, uh, the quest for self-identity, the need to know the truth about where you come from and what that, what that means. Are you a product of where you come from, who you truly are? from your experience, um, is that what makes you, you, um, you know, what, if not, then what does? And, uh, the fact that this character has a life she believes she had, a life she's been given, and then a life that she chooses, um, that, that journey was really exciting for me to kind of pull apart. And that's how I, that's how, you know, that's how Rupert and I kind of met. Um, you know, that's where the meeting of the minds was for us. You know, Rupert is really a visionary. And when he sent me his, you know, all the packages of everything that he was putting together for this, um, you know, that's really what, what cinched the deal for me. It was like, wow, this guy has has completely created uh, not only an you know an homage to the to the manga to the anime for the fans, but has his own you know put his thumbprints all over this project and really um, there's a kind of a new wave cold wave kind of feeling to this film. It's not the future that we imagine to be kind of pristine and um, you know. Uh, uh, personality -less, you know, the digital age, it has nothing to do with that. It's almost as if we've, you know, humanity is kind of, uh, has, has, has uh, engulfed itself and is sort of like the snake eating its tail and the city is built upon city and people are made out of other people. And it's, you know, it's very much a, um, I, I would say a, a, an indulgent idea of what the future could be. 
you know, I think Major's relationship with Batu is a very unique one because it's probably the most, uh, I think when, when Major is with Batu, it's the most kind of human she feels. Um, you know, she feels protected, I think, uh, emotionally when she's with him. Um, she can, she trusts him. Uh, and she probably, you know, doesn't trust that many people just because she has nothing to base her trust on exactly. Um, you know, and uh, of course he takes a liking to her and uh, I think is interested by her and probably imagines her to be, um, you know, he probably oversimplifies her experience, uh, which is probably also endearing for her in a way, um, you know, to kind of find, um, to find a, I don't know, a respite in like a very over, in a very overwhelming like experience and uh, world that she's living in. Um, and, you know, even her mind and her memories and the glitches that she's having and all these things that are constantly, you know, she never sleeps, she's constantly charging, she's she's always going forward, forward, forward. And with that too, I think she can have, share those kind of quiet moments. Like, uh, you know, he reminds her of the life that could, maybe that she perhaps once had or that could be possible. Well, Pilu and I worked before on Lucy, but we didn't really have much time to work together. And, you know, we just kind of had a few days to get to know one another and uh, we share some things in common, you know, we're, my father's Danish, so is he. And so, um, you know, there's a certain kind of sense of humor and sensibility that comes with just being from that part of the world, I think, that I'm familiar with. Um, and uh, and Pilu is so playful, you know, he loves to play during the scene. He loves to throw things back and forth. He's not afraid to try stuff. Um, you know, he's, he's just a lot of fun to work with. Um, and he just has such a good take on that character. Um, he really plays the character with a lot of integrity and, uh, you know, kind of embraces um, his, you know, war experience. And, you know, he carries, like, he carries the weight with him, but it doesn't feel heavy the way he carries it. He's, he's really, uh, he's got, a, he's breathed, breathed a lot of life into that character. You know, I think the character of Aramaki really needs a kind of a gravity to him. Um, you know, he sort of reminds me kind of what Sam Jackson does for S.H.I.E.L.D. in the Marvel films, but he's got that kind of, uh, you know, there has to be a leadership quality to him, a strength, um, a, uh, you know, a, a kind of command. Um, and uh, Takeshi brings that with him just on set. You know, he's a very um, kind of artistic character. He's really in himself. Uh, he's quite theatrical. Um, he's, you know, he's got this really uh, co kind of commanding presence about him. Um, you know, I think he gives that character the weight that it needs to hold down the heaviness of uh, the responsibility of Hanka and that that portion of the government, and of course, being the the uh, you know commander of Section Nine, he needs to have a um, you know a kind of a bite to him, which Takeshi does not in a bad way, in the best way, in the best way. Michael Pitt plays uh, Kuze, who is a sort of mirror, um, you know, for the major to kind of reflect upon. You know, he shares a, a life experience with her that they are both kind of uncovering, and she's just inexplicably drawn to him. Um, you know, really, from the beginning of this film, he becomes both her, you know, both her kind of enemy nightmare, if you want to call it, uh, you know, her um, prey, uh, and at the same time is both alluring and, um, you know, and, and, and totally in, in rap, she's completely enraptured by him. Um, and, it, and as I said, it's sort of inexplicable until she discovers the truth about uh, her own identity and in relationship to his character. And I think he also too is, is 
drawn to her and her, you know, uh, makeup, her, her identity, her journey, who is she? Um, you know, uh, it's been, it's been really intense, you know, developing that relationship just because of the depth of it. Uh, and, you know, Michael is a really, is an incredible actor and he is so present and, uh, you know, it's really difficult to get anything kind of past him. He, he really catches everything, um, which is, which is, which is so wonderful for me because nothing gets dropped or lost. He, he's, you know, I think we really have a great dance between us. Um, and, uh, it's been, even though those scenes have been difficult to, to kind of, you know, pull apart, um, it's been such a pleasure to work with someone that was so bright and, you know, uh, generous and, 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 uh, and captivating. So it's been, it's been really very uh, unexpected, but, but really awesome. Yeah, of course it would be, it wouldn't be Ghosts in the Shell without the, you know, crazy fight sequences, uh, gunplay, um, you know, it's, it's been, uh, exhausting, um, and really, uh, empowering at the same time to be able to be as physical and able as I have been on this, on this film. I've been able to really handle the weapons, uh, complete every fight, uh, do all the wire work and, you know, really with the support of the stunt team, um, you know, kind of leading me, guiding me, supporting me, cheering me on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, because the physicality is such an important part of this character, I've, you know, been really married to the idea of being able to do everything, um, you know, and be just as capable as possible. It's been, uh, it's, it's really been something else for me. And I feel that, uh, I now have a set of skills for life. <laughs> um, you know, just, uh, just, you know, it's kind of allowed me to get over a lot of the fears that I've had of, uh, you know, just being, being out of control and, uh, you know, just realizing that, uh, no, you're in control, you've got this and, uh, you know, and you can, you can be bad and you can make it look badass too. Um, it's, it's been really empowering, so. And this experience has been like nothing else I've ever, uh, I've ever had before. It's really been all encompassing and I feel I've taken on, uh, this character in a way that was very unexpected. Um, you know, it'll be hard to shake for me. I hope that the, uh, I hope the audience shares the same, um, compassion that I have for this character. And, uh, you know, I hope they, I hope they willingly go on this ride with me. Um, you know, because it's definitely, it's a, it's a ride for sure.